So today we will be discussing um, Mazdakism, an ancient, uh, somewhat religious uh, movement uh, that existed in 500s AD Persia, which was then the Sassanid Empire. Uh, we will first talk about the story of its, I guess, rise and fall from some form of power, and then we will briefly discuss whether or not I consider it to count as communism. Anyway, first we'll start with the story part, and we need to start with Emperor Kavad. When Kavad came to the throne at the age of 15, he didn't really have any power. He was more of a figurehead, whilst uh, the real power lied with a nobleman named Sukra. Sukra, quote, was in charge of government of the kingdom and the management of affairs. The people came to Sukra and undertook all their dealings with them. Treating Kavad as a person of no importance and regarding his commands with contempt, unquote. Eventually, Kavad had enough of Sukra, though, and sent him into exile to the city of Shiraz, but Kavad was still worried about rebellion, as Sukra still had control over the army. To remedy this situation, Kavad contacted a nobleman named Shapur of Ray, a very powerful opponent of Sukra. Together, they led an army against Sukra and captured him. They then sent him to a prison in the capital of the empire, Siestefan, where he was later executed. Now we'll briefly talk about Mazdakism. Mazdakism is an offshoot of Zoroastrianism, which was at the time the state religion of the Sassanid Empire. Mazdakism was named after its supposed founder, Mazdak, who some say is a later fabrication to distance the movement from Kavad, but I'll be working on the assumption that Mazdak was indeed a real person. Masochism was different from standard Zoroastrianism in that it greatly reduced the number of religious formalities because it teaches that the Zoroastrian clergy were oppressors of the public and that instead entrusting and putting power in the hands of these clergymen, you should instead find the religious truth in yourself. Masochism was pro-communal living, uh, without wealth or possession, and that's why it's been compared to communism. But we should, first of all, get back to Kavad. So, Kavad really didn't like the aristocracy. The Sassanid kingship had lost a ton of power to them over the last few hundred years, and the general aristocracy didn't like Kavad either as most of them supported the now-dead Sukra. So when Kavad encountered Mazdakism and its ideas, even though Mazdakism did not directly support Kavad, it did help him in how it disavowed the aristocrats and priesthood, which had annoyed him so. Therefore, Kavad briefly adopted Mazdakism and started to introduce primitive redistribution measures, such as distributing the contents of the royal granaries, which had before that been kept closed despite an ongoing famine. But soon enough, the nobles convened, and having enough of Kavad's shit, they deposed him and banished him to the so-called Castle, Castle of, of 
Oblivion. A prison, basically. He was broken out of said prison either by his wife or his sister. Um, the woman in question either got him out by sleeping with one of the guards, and that way the guard helped her get him out, or rolling Kavad up in a blood-soaked carpet and convincing the guard that she had had her period on the carpet, meaning that the guard would not ex inspect the carpet. Fun. Now we should briefly talk about the Hephlites. The Hephlite Empire was a state that existed in Bactria, also known as Afghanistan. Um, they had won several battles over the Sassanid king Piraz I, and eventually they even captured him. Um, though they did let him go in exchange for control over some eastern parts of the empire, a regular tribute, and a brief guardianship over his son, Kavad. So, back to Kavad. After he had escaped the Castle of Oblivion, he fled to his old friends in the Hephlite court. In the year 499, Kavad led a Hephlite army towards Siestfan. The nobles wanted to avoid another civil war, and so they immediately surrendered to Kavad and the Hephlites, reinstating Kavad as emperor. Once he was reinstated and the nobles had lost a lot of their powers, he applied less and less Masochite principles, and started to distance himself from the whole movement, greatly centralizing the government around the emperor, again, and redoing the tax code. But he did also institute a new religious position, the advocate and judge for the poor, who, well, advocated for the poor. Even worse for masochism, it started to be prosecuted. According to legend, about 3,000 of Mazdak's followers were round up and executed, buried upside down up to their feet to create a quote-unquote garden of corpses. Then Castro, Kavad's heir, summoned Mazdak himself and showed him the corpses of his followers. Mazdak fainted and would later be executed. And that's where the story part ends, but is it communism? Well, first, I should say hey, that it is indeed anachronistic to apply terms such as communism to a religious movement that happened thousands of years before the uh, invent of capitalism. Saying that, though, there are some people who still do claim that it is communism, such as H.P. Meta in his paper, Masochism, A Plea for a Better Estimate. In this paper, he quotes a another thinker, um, Taras Porewala. I'm sorry, I'm not good at Indian names. Not sure if it's an Indian name anyway. Um, quote, Mazdak might be called the first Bolshevist in history. In many respects, Bolshevists might even be regarded as lukewarm when compared with him. Unquote. I wouldn't go as far as to say that personally, but I would indeed call Mazdakism um, communist, as it did, as far as I'm concerned, advocate for a stateless, classless, moneyless society, all centered around religious enlightenment, I guess. Uh, even though oh, most modern instances of communism have been 
highly secular and or atheistic, such as the Soviet Union, that does not mean that communism cannot be highly religious, such as Mazdakism was. And so I do think Mazdakism was communist. But Mazdakism wasn't really effective at being communist. They didn't have any real dialectical thinking. It was very loose. Um, as I said, at the focus of Mazdakism was more on the religious aspects of it instead of the societal aspects. It wasn't very effective because of this. It was highly decentralized and didn't really coordinate any proletarian campaigns to overthrow the government. It didn't even have a concept of socialism. Um, it was basically only as effective as... A some affluent white kids starting a commune in the middle of some field somewhere. So I guess that's about it. Uh, sorry for not making a video in a while. I'm not really good at this whole schedule thing and, you know, waiting a whole month for only a few minutes of footage isn't really good to make me do to you all four of my viewers. Um, so from now on, I will attempt to produce a video every two weeks. Um, thank you, and uh, goodbye.